What's up, guys? Okage Puya here, and another big week in the Champions League. And honestly, every Champions League week this year has been big. And I think that's a big reason has to do a big reason with that has to do with the new league phase format. And I wish people would sing their praises about the league phase more often. Because honestly, with this league phase, every single match day, we either have big games to look forward to or tricky, interesting scenarios to look forward to in the league table. And this week, we have both. We got Barcelona playing away from home in the Zignali Dona Park against the Champions League finalists of last year, Dortmund. And you have Real Madrid with a very tricky game away from home to Atalanta, the most informed team in Italy. And a loss for Real Madrid, which is very much possible. A loss for Real Madrid could put them in a very dangerous situation where these guys might not even get to the playoff positions of the Champions League. You guys, we're going to talk about both of those games. I think those are the most interesting games of the week. Um, so let's just get into it. Let's get head over, you guys. Let's head over to Foot Mob and let's see what's cracking over here. So we, oops, let me go to the other one. I'm a little small here down here on the left-hand corner, but here we go. Atalanta versus Real Madrid. Now, actually, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Champions League round of six. Cool. Let's go to Champions League, right? And let's take a little gander at the table. Let's take a nice little peek at the table, guys. Here we are. We got the table right here. Here we are. Uh, Liverpool. We see Liverpool with their perfect re perfect record so far in first place. But this is where it gets interesting, guys. This is where it gets interesting. Look at Atalanta. Three wins and two draws. Hopefully, you guys can see. You guys can't because my freaking face cam is so big. So I will go back to small mode. Here we go. Atalanta in fifth place. Three wins and two draws. These guys haven't even lost in the Champions League this season yet. And they're coming into the game with two wins back-to-back -back in the Champions League. And I believe their last game was a 6-1 thrashing of young boys. And these guys are first place in Serie A. They are first. They're not a team fighting for top four. This Atalanta team, coached by Gasparini, is going for a title charge in Italy, which is supremely impressive. They are a high at high octane attacking football from Atalanta. Let's go down here. <clears throat> Hello, Madrid. 24th place, you guys. They're in the last spot currently. One spot behind Dinamo and one spot above that garbage club, Paris Saint-Germain. In 24th place, they're in the last spot of playoffs. After five games, two wins, three losses. Going into form, two losses back-to-back. -back, and they are going away from home. Away from... Uh, excuse me. Away from home against Atalanta, the most informed team in Italy. With that struggling Real Madrid defense against a team that attacks so hard, so aggressively in Atalanta. You guys, Real Madrid, this is a scary match. Let's head or let's head back over to the game. This is a scary match for Real Madrid. It, it it really is. It really is a scary match. You got Lukman de Ket. I always say his name wrong. Charles de Ketlere. I always say his name wrong. Retegui. I think he's the top goal scorer in Serie A this season. Darun, who's having a great season. <clears throat> this Atalanta team is just getting the job done and making getting those big boy wins in Serie A to put them in first place. Then you got Real Madrid in out of form Mbappe. Bellingham probably been one of the shining lights of them this season. Rodrigo out of form basically all season, barely coming back from injury. Uh, Vinicius Jr. will not be starting. I know this for a fact. Vinny Jr. will not be starting against Atalanta tomorrow, so this is false. You got... Old ass 90 year old Modric, Valverde, who should play at right back because that right back, they got Lucas Vasquez, the worst right back I've seen in a couple of years. He gets smoked every time against pacey, technical wingers who know how to dribble and take on their man. Look who Vasquez is going to be dealing with all night tomorrow. Mr. Adamalo Lukman, who has been on fire this season and just got that big winning goal against Milan the last week in Serie A to take them up to first place in the league. You guys. This is a scary match. You have Rudiger, who has not been at his absolute best all season. Chouameni, who is barely back from injury. Fran Garcia, who on his day can be decent, but on also 50% of the time, he's got awful. So Real Madrid, a loss tomorrow is very possible. And honestly, 
I am predicting Real Madrid to lose. I'm predicting Real Madrid to lose tomorrow because honestly, I, I the only shining light for Real Madrid going into this match is the fact that Atalanta will give him space. Now let's see how that Atalanta backline will acclimate to the pace of Kylian Mbappe, the pace of Rodrigo. Let's see how they will deal with that because that can be a very significant opening for Real Madrid to get some goals past this Atalanta defense. But this team is first place in Serie A for a reason. People know their weakness. People know that these guys don't have the strongest defense in the world. They don't. In my opinion, they don't. They can't play with such, you know, the, the, regardless of what their defensive numbers say, they cannot play a sustainable style of football where they attack so hard and defend so well. Uh, in my experience, it's, it's, from what I've seen in football, it's it's usually not possible. So Real Madrid, they will get their chances tomorrow. Will Mbappe, who has been missing chances and has missed two penalties back to back, will Mbappe get those goals? Will Mbappe put away his chances? Will Rodrigo find his balls and get some goals himself? Will Bellingham pop up with a clutch goal? Huh? Let's see what happens because Vinny Jr. won't be there. I don't know why Foot Mob is saying Vinny Jr. is predicted to start tomorrow. I really don't think Vinny Jr. is going to be fit tomorrow. I think he's out for another week or two. So that's false. Can these guys step up? Because I'm also telling you right now, Real Madrid will get their chances, but I will tell you this right now to your face. Real Madrid will concede chances. This Atalanta attack will score at least two goals tomorrow. I'm confident about it. I'm confident that Atalanta will at least score two goals tomorrow. And that's why I'm going to predict this game. Atalanta at home to the mighty Real Madrid, the record Champions League winners, 15 times. I do predict that Atalanta will win this game 2-1. And all of a sudden, Real Madrid will probably be outside of the top 24. And they have two games to bring themselves back into the top 24. Something you could say about Real Madrid is they are 100% not making it into the top eight. Mathematically, the way other teams are playing and the way they will probably pick up points, Real Madrid has no... Oh, guys, look at that shit. Oh, my God, guys. Holy shit. Look at that shit. Anyway, mathematically, the way other teams are getting points... Real Madrid cannot get top eight. So they will have to get to the round of 16 through playoffs if they get into the playoff position. But tomorrow, you guys, do not be surprised if Real Madrid lose to Atalanta. The Atalanta is not some minnow team that is going to be scared of Real Madrid. These guys will be there and they will stand their ground. You guys, they're going to square up and they're going to come to take... You know, I was going to say something wild there. I'm not going to say it, YouTube tax. But they're going to come and take some ass off Real Madrid. And they, in my opinion, will win 2-1 tomorrow at home against Real Madrid. So, guys, if you're still watching, man, let me know what you think. Because this At Atalanta game is coming at a weird time for this Real Madrid team. A Real Madrid team in their last five, three wins and two losses. Win, loss, win, loss form at the moment. In December... How often do you see that of Real Madrid? So with their best player out on Vinny Jr., it's very difficult to tell how this game will go. But I think I'm going with the with the team that's in form. I'm going with the team that's not going to be afraid against uh, afraid of Real Madrid. I'm going to go with Atalanta with that 2-1 win. And then, guys, on the other side of Spain, I mean, it's not really on the other side. Madrid is kind of the center of Spain. And then you kind of got Barcelona on the... East coast of Spain, right? I, I think if I'm getting my geography right, I'm going to Spain, by the way, in the last week of March of 2025. So hopefully my geography is right because I'm literally going there. This is the other big game. The other huge game. Oh, sorry, you guys can't even see it. Pulling it up. Dortmund at home to Barcelona. Now, my initial reaction to this game when it was drawn was that, you know what? This will be a tough game for Barca. We have to show respect to Borussia Dortmund because they got to the Champions League final last year and they pretty much outplayed Real Madrid in that final until they shot themselves in the foot and lost the game 2-0. Now, Dortmund are doing very well in the Champions League. They are in the top eight. I think they're like fourth place or something. But the thing about Dortmund is they have had a very, they've probably out of all the big teams have had the, has had the, have had the easiest league phase draw. They've won all the games they're supposed to, but they lost obviously away from home to the in the Santiago Bernabeu 5-2. But 
must mention that they were up 2-0 going to halftime. So, listen, this dormant team has been asked this year. Take it from a Bundesliga fan, guys. This dormant team has been awful. Inconsistent in the Bundesliga. Last week, they did get a, a very well-deserved draw against Bayern at home. But... They go the next weekend and drop points to Borussia Mönchengladbach, a team that hasn't been all that stellar in the Bundesliga this season. Dortmund is a weird one. Nuri Shahin, I feel like, has not gotten the best of this team so far. Gurasi, at times, has basically been carrying this Dortmund team. Basically been carrying this Dortmund team. So, at home, you know this Dortmund defense is probably going to leak chances. I'm interested to see how high of a line will Dortmund play. Will they attack Barcelona? The answer to that is yes. Now, how aggressively will they attack Barcelona? That's up to Nuri Shine, and that's for the, and then we'll see on Wednesday how aggressive they'll be. I honestly think Dortmund can come away with this game with a draw. I honestly can't see Dortmund winning. I think Barcelona are going to attack them too hard. They're going to create too many chances. And eventually, Lewandowski, who historically, at his days at Bayern, guys, Lewandowski, I mean, he would always score. He would always score against Dortmund. So Lewandowski, ever since he left Dortmund back in 2014, 2015, the guy loved scoring against Dortmund. So honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Robert Lewandowski pops up with a goal here uh, against Dortmund um, away from home. Uh, playing in the St. Daly Duna Park. I wouldn't be surprised. So ex I honestly expect a Lewandowski goal. Laminia Mal against uh, Ben Sabaini, the, the Algerian left back for uh, Borussia Dortmund. That's going to be a tough night for Ben Sabaini because he's not the strongest 1v1 defender. He is definitely a fullback that is known more for his attacking output and what he does further up the pitch. So honestly, it's very scary. I don't know actually. I could have sworn Rafinha got injured for Barcelona, but if Rafinha's fit and Lewandowski, Laminia Ma, and, and, and Rafinha are playing with Dani Olmo behind them, Casado and Pedri, Casado and Pedri in midfield, honestly, I, I, I think Barcelona will mop the floor with Dortmund. I think you have to give respect to Dortmund. I think people think this will be a tough game for them, but given the way that Barca team is going to play, how high, the f how high up the field they will press, how much more technical quality they have in their midfield. You know, Casado and Pedri and Olmo compared to Sabitzer, Felix Nemcha, uh, it still is, we still have to see if uh, Julian Brandt will play. That would be a key player for them, Julian Brandt. But obviously, the Barcelona, the Barcelona midfield is, is so much superior. Now, in terms of defense, I think both teams are honestly equal at this point. Barcelona are in a little bit of dip of form in terms of how strong their defense has been the last three, four weeks. And this Dortmund team have actually improved their defense the last month, even though their performances have not been consistently good enough the last month or two. The last month and a half, one month of football, their performances have not been consistently good enough. So in terms of defense on both sides, I'm honestly looking at an even matchup in the midfield. I'm looking at Barca being superior and in uh, and up top, I'm obviously looking at Barcelona being superior, but I'm not going to sleep on Gurasi. I'm definitely, you know, if you're watching this game, guys, Barcelona fans, uh, neutral fans. Definitely look out for Jamie Bino Gittins, the young uh, English winger who honestly often shows up in these big games for Dortmund the last two years. Watch out for Jamie Bino Gittins. Watch out for Suhu Gurasi. These are the guys. And if Julian Brandt plays, Brandt, Gurasi, and and um, um, Jamie Bino Gittins, those three players are going to be the three key guys that Dortmund can uh, use to hurt Barcelona. But honestly, given the style of plays, given the fact that it's also Hansi Flick, who never lost to Dortmund, I think, when he was at Bayern, if I'm remembering correctly. I don't think he'd ever lost to Dortmund. I think he destroyed them every time. Um, if I'm being honest, I think Barcelona will mop the floor with Dortmund. I think they'll win 3-1. I wish I think they'll win 3-1. And I don't know if 3-1 is worthy of saying they'll mop the floor with Dortmund, but I think there will be a stark difference in quality between the two teams. I think Barcelona will win the game away from home 3-1 in the Zignal Iduna Park. And, 
you know, that's just another great win for them throughout the season. So, <clears throat> you guys, the two biggest teams in Spain with two tricky and interesting matchups this week. I think this is the two standout games. Obviously, Juventus at home to Man City. I'm not too intrigued in that. I think Man City will get the job done. I think that Juventus team is far too young to get a result over that Manchester City team. And obviously, I'm going to probably post it before this video, but I talked a little bit about the Bayern Shakhtar game. Obviously, this is a. I, 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 I got I to gotta talk about my team, Bayern. But um, yeah, Real Madrid, I'm predicting a 2 1 loss away from home to Atalanta. And I'm thinking Barcelona will get the job done in Dortmund and get that 3 1 win and get themselves another three points. In the Champions League phase, you guys, it's been your boy Hokage Puya. Tune in for those post matches. And when these games go down, I will have post match reactions up later in the day when I'm back from work. I'll see you guys then. It's been your boy Hokage. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace. <clears throat>